Hello, welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're going to keep looking at the Dragon's Maze decks and we're going to move on and look at Rakdos Revelry, which is a black-red deck. Let's dive in look at the deck list here. So we've got 25 creatures, 4 sorceries, 2 enchantments, 2 artifacts, 1 instant, uh, 26 land, we've got a mana curve off to the side there. Uh, so let's start looking at the cards. So the Foil Face Rare and the Rakdos Legendary is Exavar, Rakdos Blood Witch. Uh, so 2, a black and a red for a 3-3, three, three. has First Strike in Haste. So I mean, right off the bat, like 4 mana for like a 3-3 three, three with First Strike in Haste is, is pretty solid, I think. Um, has Unleash, which is the Rakdos keyword for this... Um, the second trip to Ravnica. Uh, so Unleash is, uh, you can have the creature enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, um, but if it has a plus one plus one counter on it, it can't block. Um, and that's whether it gets the plus one plus one counter from being Unleashed, or if it picks up a plus one plus one counter from um, from an effect later on. Uh, so she has the potential of coming in as a 4-4 four, four with First Strike Haste, which can't block, which is obviously you know very aggressive. Uh, she has the other extra effect. Um, each other creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has haste. There is a problem with that, which we will cover probably within the next minute or so. Um, so Exavar, I think is, um, I mean, like she's, I think very effective. Uh, you know, she's cost effective. You know, four mana for first strike and haste, and you know, giving this kind of other kind of minor buff to your other um things that have plus one plus one counters i think is fine you know i think it's okay um does feel a bit boring compared to all the other like guild champions um i think only really the selesnia one was it um emara tandris something like that is is i think that one's like the the rock bomb out of the 10 um i think exavar is near the bottom though it just it just feels very boring you know for a you know so many potential interesting things you could do with a um a legendary rakdos creature and this one is just kind of it's just like an efficient if efficient attacker i suppose i mean really what it's like it reminds me of um the carnival hellseed from the um return to ravnica rakdos deck which was again pretty much the same it was like first strike in haste and had unleash um so not much has really changed there, um, which is really sh it was a shame, really. It's just a little bit boring. Anyway, we'll move on. Um, so keep in mind that each other creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has haste. Keep that in mind. Um, so we have a single blood fray giant, uh, two and two red for a four, three, has trample and unleash. Um, so yeah, it can be a five, five, four with trample that can't block uh, for four mana, which is actually pretty solid. That's okay. And obviously it could have haste as well if you've got um, uh, Exavar out. Um, so yeah, that's that's okay. Uh, a single Grim Roustabout, uh, so one in the black for a 1-1, one, one, has Unleash, and you can pay one in the black to regenerate it. Um, this is also okay. I feel like unleashing this, you lose some of its uh, versatility, because like having regeneration, I think, is obviously much more useful when you're able to block. Um, so this is one I would maybe not unleash, um, personally. But then it's like, at that point, you've it's just a worse Drudge Skeletons. Um, yep. Uh, and then we have two Rakdos Drake, uh, so two and a black for a 1-2, so kind of expensive. Uh, two and a black for a 1-2 flyer, it has Unleashed, so it can be, what, a 2-3 flyer that can't block for three mana, which is sort of just about okay, I suppose. You've got one extra toughness over, like, Wind Drake, but with the downside, you can't block. Like, I don't know if that's worth it. I, I went on a whole spiel about Unleash when I looked at the Rakdos pre-constructed deck in um in return to Rafna. basically i just don't think unleash does enough to make it kind of exciting um anyway uh and then two spawn of rick's mardi three a black and a red for a five three with unleash so it can be a six four that can't block for five mana again which is like fine i guess like it's not but again it's not like great is it um yeah so and so that was it. So that was it. Those are all the creatures that get a plus one, plus one counters. There are six creatures in this deck that benefit from your foil face rares um, effect of, you know, of synergies and stuff. Um, nothing else in the deck uses plus one, plus one counters. And it just feels like a huge missed opportunity. Um, yeah, no idea why it was designed this way, because there's so many unleashed creatures that could be included here. But um no, we just it's 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 really confusing why they've decided to include the cards they have, but we'll we'll press on. Um so we have two Carnage Gladiators, uh two, a black and a red for a four two. Uh whenever a creature blocks, that creature's control loses one life. Um so I suppose some synergy here with your unleashed creatures, like can't lose life if I don't block. <laughs> I'll just lose life from being attacked anyway. Um and you pay one 
Uh, one cards, one black, one red to regenerate it. Um, I quite like this, honestly, Carnage Gladiator. Um, I mean, part of the fact it has a great like name and art, and it, it just looks super cool. Um, the effect is pretty good because you know it's um obviously penalizing an opponent for, um, you know, blocking when you want to be going kind of all out aggro. I suppose. Um, yeah, I suppose it's okay. Um, two spike jesters. Uh, one black, one red for a three one with haste. Um, yep. Would have been nice if this had Unleash. Um, seems like a perfectly fine card that could have had Unleash. Um, of course, then X of R's effect would give it literally no bonus. But yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, three one haste for two mana is is okay, I suppose. Um, and then we go in, go two Smelt Ward Gatekeepers. Um, because we are obviously apparently really committed to having these Gatekeeper cards. Um, in these decks, so three and a red for two four. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, if you control two or more gates, gain control of target creature and opponent controls it till end turn, untap that creature, gains haste until end turn. Um, exactly the same comment that I've said with the other gatekeepers in the other two decks I've looked at so far. The fact this requires two gates and you only have four in the deck um, just means this effect is hardly ever going to go off. Like I would say most of the time this is just going to be a 2-4 for four mana, and it's just a bit disappointing. Could have triggered off one gate, and I think it would have been fine, but it is what it is. Um, and then this is another really confusing inclusion, two gutter snipes. Uh, so two and a red for a two two. Um, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, gutter snipe deals two damage to each opponent. Now I am not saying gutter snipe is a bad card. Far from it. I think gutter snipe is a great card. Um, however, it does not belong in this deck at all because if you remember from the deck list, let's quickly cycle back there. Um, right, we have five sorceries and instants combined, and we have two and we have two gutter snipes. It's just, <laughs> I mean, just why? It's just such a bad deck building choice. Um, I mean, I suppose you could say like, oh, great. Well, I get two gutter snipes if I buy this deck, I suppose, and I deconstruct it. But like, like so much of the time, this is just going to be doing nothing because you it has only like five cards in the deck that trigger it. It's such a weird inclusion. Um, yeah, we really weird choice. Um, two Minotaur Aggressor, uh, six and a red for a six-two first strike in haste. So big, big beefy boy. Um, but we're playing Rakdos. We kind of want to win by the time we get to seven mana. Like we want to be attacking as soon as possible with small, cheap, efficient creatures. Um, I suppose if the game does go along, you've got this option here. But like, sure. Like it just again, it just feels kind of like I would expect this like in Gruel maybe where you've got the green to like ramp up into it. But um. Yeah, just a weird, again, like another weird choice. This easily could have been like a cheaper creature with Unleash, like Splatter Thug or something, which is which has also got First Strike and is, you know, like a third of the cost. <laughs> and, um, well, half the cost, let's not exaggerate too much. It's half the cost, also has First Strike, has Unleash, gets plus one, plus one counter. So it combos with Exavert. Like, mm, I, just, I just don't get it. Um, Riot Piker is pretty great though. I actually always wanted this in a core set because I think it's like really perfect. Like it feels very core set y, you know? Uh, so Riot Piker is one and a red for a 2 1 with first strike, has to attack every turn if able. Um, which is not, um, not as I do. I would obviously, I'd prefer it being not able to block because sometimes if you're forced to attack, that can kind of feel bad. Like if you, if it just like can't block, that's fine. You don't have to like throw it into combat that's definitely not going to win. But I don't know, being at like two mana with the 2 1 first, you know with first strike as well um I, I i i quite like this and like i feel this is what the deck needed more of like more of this kind of creature uh two slum reapers uh three in a black for a four two when it enters the battlefield each player sacrifices a creature um this is fine essentially just a slightly bigger like flesh bag marauder um yeah it's fine i think at four mana to do a um a symmetrical kind of sacrifice effect i think that's all right Three Gus Skulk, it's just, just one and a black for a 2-2. Two, two. Just a, it's just a black bear. Sure, sure. Again, definitely there were definitely unleashed creatures you could have had in here instead, definitely. Or like, I don't know, just so much... Oh, so frustrating. Definitely, there were definitely better cards you could have had here instead of Gus Skulk. Um, Dagger Drome Imp, off the top of my head, which has evasion and it has lifelink and it's the same cost. Like, mm, anyway. Uh, so non-creature spells, uh, we've got all for the guilds, uh, two and a red, uh, mono-coloured creatures can't block this turn, which is like, it's an okay effect, um, but, yeah, I don't know, it's, 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 it's just, it feels actually over expect it feels over costed for what it does, um, because, um, I think in, um, I think M13, maybe, 
I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of a, of a. Well, you got like say tectonic rift, which I think was in M13, which like for four man destroys the land and stops all creatures blocking for a turn. You know, and at three mana we're only stopping monocolored creatures, which like yeah, I'm not saying there wouldn't be monocolored creatures around, but I don't know. Just this feels like a weak kind of trick. I mean, it does stop some blockers, I suppose, but not not enough in my opinion. Um, yeah. Um, a single punish the enemy. Uh, so four and a red for a one one. Uh, four and a red for a one one. What am I talking about? One punish the enemy. Four and a red. Instant speed. Um, does three damage to target player and three damage to target creature. So it's just very expensive to do double lightning bolt, which is I mean it's uh, yeah it's an okay effect. Like three damage is fairly chunky, but again it's very expensive at five mana. Um, but it's you know it's it's okay. It's okay. But it's like that's the only burn spell, and we're playing black red. That was the like that's the only burn spell or like solid removal, which is insane to me. Um, a single sinister possession, uh, one black mana aura goes on a creature. Whenever enchanted creature attacks or blocks, its control loses two life. Sure, put this on an opponent's creature so they don't want to block you or attack you when you've got stuff that can't block anyway. I guess maybe. Uh, so the other rare is Havoc Festival. Uh, so four, one black, one red for an enchantment. Players can't gain life. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses half of half of their life rounded up. So um, I do think this is just too expensive to matter. Like, again, like turn six, you kind of sort of want to have won by then, I suppose, when you're playing like black red, when you're playing Rakdos and you're kind of being trying to be as aggressive as, aggressive as possible. But like... This deck feels so like so slow and dirty, like you might easily hit six mana. Um, at least this way then ends the game, right? It just stops game. It stops people gaining life, and they just keep losing half their life every turn. So um, yeah. Um, is it greedy to wish this only affected opponents rather than you as well? It wouldn't be very Rakdos, I suppose. But it only affected opponents. It feels more, uh, more flavorful for it to affect everyone. But um, yeah, this is. <sighs> It's, honestly, it's a bit of a disappointing rare, and I know this is a alternate alternative I suggested back in the um the other Rakdos deck, but like in retrospect, I do think it's just too expensive, and like it does it does nothing the turn you play it. You have to wait essentially. Well, yeah, you don't you don't have to wait a full like round. It is going to do something on your um opponent's next turn, but like I don't know, it's just it's just it's just not very impressive to me. Uh, two morgue bursts. Uh, four, one black, one red. Sorcery speed. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Morgue burst deals damage to target creature. Play equal to the power of the card. Return this way. This is so expensive, <laughs> like and like at sorcery speed as well. Um, for like honestly, such like a like really mediocre effect. I mean, it does hit creatures or players, I suppose. And you've got some fairly big-ish creatures in the deck, like say the mice or aggressor or. I don't know. I'm sure there's another one which I can't think of right now. But um, it's just so expensive at six mana just to get a raised dead effect and a bit of burn damage. Like, oh, it's just... Man, this this deck is really, mm, really not feeling this. Uh, but we do have a good card here, Toil and Trouble. I actually really like this card. Um, when I went to the Dragon's Maze pre Dragon's Maze pre-release, pre I managed to get two of these in my deck, and this was like, this was my silver bullet for like winning games. Um, so the toil side is two and a black. Target player loses, draws two cards and loses two life. And and the trouble side is two and a red. Trouble deals damage to target player equal to number of cards in that player's hand. If you, can, if you can afford it, you can fuse and play both sides, and they synergize really well. And um, what I used to, what I was using this for at the pre-release was as a, as a kill spell. Um, because say I don't know because Dragon's Maze is kind of a slow, dirty format, as you can probably tell from all the cards being really expensive. So we do toil on the opponent, make them draw two cards, lose two life, and then maybe they've got sort of like three or four cards in hand, and then trouble hits them for another like, you know, four damage. They've taken like six damage there, and like that was usually enough to I used that was using that as a finisher. Um, but it was obviously nice the way you've got the toil side. If you're running out of fuel, you can do it um and draw some extra cards yourself. So toil and trouble, really really good. Actually, um, might be might be my favorite out of the um. Dragon's Maze split cards, I think just because of that um, that good time I had with it at the pre-release. Like, really, really sad little card, actually. Probably the best card in the deck, if I'm, if I'm, um, if I'm being honest. And then two clue stones. We know what the clue stones do. They're just, they're not they're not key runes. <laughs> they're, they're very disappointing. They're not key runes. 
Um, and then four guild gates, 12 swamps, and 10 mountains. Um, so what could have been, uh, I mean, apart from change the whole deck, because honestly, I think this is terrible. This I think really think this is a bad, bad deck. Um, just really badly put together. Um, let's talk about alternate rares, maybe. Um, well, firstly, I've said it just needs, it just needs more unleashed creatures, it just needs more cheap, aggressively costed creatures that can come down, immediately start swinging, you know? Um, alternate rares maybe instead of the Havoc Festival either side of Insanity because like if you let's just go full you know <laughs> let's just real double down on the Rakdos here uh, so for a black and a red for a 6-4 at the beginning of each end step everyone discards their hand just like everyone is Rakdos now everyone is hellbent now um, ironically this is a card that should have been in original uh, Ravnica for Rakdos like to uh, immediately switch on Hellbent and like make everyone else Hellbent and like you've got stuff that cares about Hellbent um, but yeah this could have been a really good big beefy rare to have in here um, the other option I guess is I was thinking like, like maybe Desecration Demon um, it's 2 and 2 black for a 6-6 six, six fly which is really really good cost um, but at the beginning of each, each combat uh, an opponent can sacrifice a creature and if they do you tap Desecration Demon but it gets a plus one plus one counter so they can keep feeding it to like um stall it out but like it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger um so I, I think that's just a really nice design i think it you know would just sort of fit well like it's a repeatable removal effect honestly um and then also i was thinking like maybe like showstopper like i was just i was just trying to think of other better rakdos cards from dragon's maze uh, so showstopper one black one colors one black one red in speed until in turn uh when creatures you control die they do two damage to other um creatures yeah sure like turns all your uh, creatures into exploding <laughs> exploding zombie clowns i suppose sure um but yeah man this really this deck really need like more unleashed creatures I, I do think it's like this is pretty bad honestly i think as a deck and it's just so disappointing to see rakdos keep getting like just like not a great time of it and like um by the next time we go back to ravnica which is um, you know, like um, guilds of Ravnica and stuff. By then, we've got then the um, uh, the Planeswalker decks, and there's not one for in in Rakdos colors um, to show off uh, Spectacle, which is their ability they gained then. Um, so yeah, this is really disappointing. I really don't like this one. Um, real, you know, following on from the Orzhov one, this has been really disappointing. Um, yeah, I just think it's really badly put together. Um, I don't think this would have played very well out of the box at all, personally. Um, but what are your thoughts on the deck after seeing it? If you have any stories or comments, opinions, uh, you know, what you would have done to make this deck better, because I do think it's pretty bad, um, please put a comment below. Um, always like reading people's comments, but I'll be back next time. Go look at another Dragon's Maze uh, deck. But until then, thanks for watching and listening, and have a great day.